Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to provide for this honorable house and the listening public highlights and updates on the actions the Ministry of Health is taking to ensure the health, safety, and well-being of persons in care. Mr. Speaker, this government is committed to ensuring that persons in care, including seniors and persons with disabilities, are protected from harm. The Ministry, through the Aging and Disability Services, has taken strides in 2018 to improve how we operate to fulfill our protection and support roles. We have also moved forward key initiatives that help in the prevention, detection, and addressing of abuse in care homes. On average, each month, ADS receives three complaints of seniors' abuse and three complaints regarding care homes. We have been working hard to not only improve our responses to these complaints, but also to ensure preventative methods are in place. You may have heard of two recent cases before the courts regarding allegations of care home staff harming residents. Aging and Disability Services was on top of these incidents and worked with the care homes, police, and families to ensure protection and appropriate remedial actions occurred. Mr. Speaker, prevention is always better than reaction in such circumstances. A key preventative step the ministry took was the creation of service standards for registered care homes. Building on the legislative changes in 2017 that strengthened the regulation of care homes, a code of practice was published and applies to the 21 regulated care homes with nearly 400 residents. Mr. Speaker, the 2018 code of practice, which can be located on gov.bm, is the first set of comprehensive standards to embrace quality of life and care and includes a new bill of rights for persons in care. We are still in the implementation phase of the code and have completed the first round of inspections to see where homes stand and what is needed to improve. Central to the success of the code, improved care and protection is education and training. A new role was introduced this fall in ADS of an education officer. The education officer will provide and organize training for care home staff on the code and priority areas identified in need of improvement. Protecting people in care, Mr. Speaker, includes those living in their own homes in the community that need support. Aging and Disability Services is strengthening our support systems to improve case management and abuse investigation services. By January of 2019, ADS will have two new case managers, bringing the total up to four, with a range of responsibilities from, client, excuse me, from basic client support to crisis intervention. In addition, to help manage this caseload and ensure consistent access to case management services and supports to their clients, ADS will be also introducing walk-in hours. Mr. Speaker, effective December 1, 2018, walk-in and intake hours will begin to improve client access and office efficiency. From 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., clients will be assured that a case manager will be on site and able to see them during this period. And if they arrive or call outside of this time, they will be contacted by the office at the earliest opportunity. Other operational improvements for the office include the following. The introduction of a new software program to improve case management and collect data to assist with future long-term care system design and development. To go, this will go live in February of 2019. We're also having improved communication and coordination with the Bermuda Police Services for abuse investigations. Mr. Speaking, Aging and Disability Services has been busy over the last year, and I want to acknowledge their hard work and also thank the public for their patience with our efforts to approve our ability to protect and support our clients in the community. In addition, I would like to acknowledge that the care homes, caregivers, community organizations, families and friends who all play an essential part in ensuring persons with disabilities and seniors are respected and treated with dignity in our community. We must continue to work together to reach our vision of healthy people and healthy communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Junior Minister.